today. Uh, if you go back to January 2nd, the first Sunday of the new year, we had a little uh, sermon entitled, What's My Plan? And I told you that uh, I wanted to bring that up sometimes in some of the sermons, and I kind of did a few times as we were moving through. I-, I wasn't too worried about it, because guess what? Today is What's My Plan Part 2. And uh, my, my, but the idea was is that we could take January to kind of put together a plan for 2022, evaluate some things, kind of look at some things, and then look ahead and, and start in February. And so uh, today I want to talk about, uh, if you don't have a plan, I want to encourage you to get one. And if you don't start on February 1st, that's fine. If you wait till March 1st, that's great, but to, to have some kind of a plan. And so I want to uh, kind of revisit that. And, and the big idea is, is today is the same as it was on January 2nd. Growing spiritually mature doesn't just happen. Okay, it, it doesn't just happen that all of a sudden you wake up one day and you're going, oh, wow, I, I'm feeling, you know, I, I guess more spiritually mature. It, it, there's got to be some way that we engage, that we do something, that we create space for God to work. And so we want to talk about that today. Uh, I love the kayak. And here's one thing I know about getting the water. Of course, this is kind of strange to talk about as I, as I look outside and I see the uh, snow and the ice, obviously. But um, I love the kayak. And when you get a kayak and water, I mean, there, there's something you have to do. And it's called paddle. And so you, 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 need to, you need to paddle in order to move. Now, you can just sit there. You could drift. M- might be a good situation. It might not. Uh, if you want to get back to where you were from, uh, you, you've got to paddle in order to move it. Uh, bicycle. Love the ride bike. And here's another thing. I have to pedal. And if I want to get from point A to point B and then to point C, uh, unless it's all downhill so I can just coast, I, I need to pedal and if, of course, it's uphill all the way, um, I obviously need to pedal. And so, so that's, that's important. So, so kayaking, bicycling, a lot of other things, there's something that, that you have to do. You don't just get to sit there and have it happen. In a spiritual sense, I think the same thing is true. Uh, if you walked every day, if you went into a room that had all kinds of exercise equipment and you just walked into the room and spent 30 minutes there and then you left, I- I'm just going to let you know, you're not going to get in shape, all right? You've got to sit down at the machines. You've got you've to do something. And, and just because you're gathering right now online, just because you're doing that and you're saying, hey, I'm part of church right now. This is church. I, I'm, I'm there. I'm at the gathering today. Uh, that's not necessarily going to make you a better believer. It could if you take the things that you hear and put them to work in your life, but that's necessarily going to happen. And so uh, I'd like to review for a few moments and look back at what we talked about on January 2nd. There's, there's three things we talked about, a vertical uh, relationship, horizontal relationship, and then internally. And so first, vertically, the verse I gave was Mark chapter 12 and verse 30, and you must, must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. And so I kind of concluded by saying this, what's my plan to love God completely this year? What's my plan to love God completely this year? With all my heart, all my soul, all my mind, all my strength, everything I've got, what's my plan to be able to do that? Horizontally, with our relationship with others, Philippians chapter 2 and verse 3, uh, don't be selfish, Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. And we talked about what's what's my plan this year to take the level of concern that I have for myself and use it with others also. To be as concerned as I am for myself, to be concerned with others. And then internally, what's going to go on internally for us? We talked about Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body, trusting in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. And my question here is, what's my plan to allow Christ to live through me? And so I, I want to go kind of come at a little different angle, but it's the same idea today. Spiritual maturity doesn't just happen. I'm in the book of Philippians chapter 2. In verses 12 through 13. Dear friends, you always follow my instructions when I was with you. And now that I am away, it is even more important. Work hard to show the results of your salvation. Obey God with deep reverence and fear. 
For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. I want to use those verses to help us again talk about establishing a plan, some kind of a plan that we're going to have this year. And, uh, you know, just because I read those verses to you and you heard those verses, it doesn't mean that you're doing those verses, all right? And so that's kind of the point. Uh, you, you just heard that, and you could say, okay, well, I I've, I've went through that passage, let's do something else, and, and, but yet not engage it, not uh, do what it says. Uh, we have to put God's word into practice. When we read God's word, when we're hearing God's word, when we're in a time like this, we have to put it into practice. And uh, just in case you don't know this, sleeping with your Bible under your pillow is not going to help, all right? That's not going to help. You're not going to just gain some things through the night, except possibly if you're using a family Bible, a stiff neck. But uh, just because you put your Bible under your pillow at night and that's where it's at, that doesn't mean that that's going to give you some information. And so let's kind of unpack this verse a little bit, these verses. First of all, it said, work hard to show the results of your salvation. Work hard to show the results of your salvation. Uh, Paul is writing to the people in Philippi. And what he's basically saying is this. He's saying, you, you can't be content with your past glories, but you need to demonstrate your faith uh, day by day as you're growing in your relationship with God. And so I, I would say today is exactly the same thing. We need to work hard to show the results of our salvation. That isn't just a, a one and done. That is a daily thing that we're going to do. We're going to live out our faith just like our mission statement says. We're going to live out our faith in everything that we do. And so I can't be content with the past glories of my life, the past accomplishments for Jesus, uh, the past victories that I've had over sin. What about today? What about tomorrow? And uh, it'd be easy for some of us. It'd be easy for me. I, I, I can look back and I can say, oh, wow, this was an amazing thing that happened back here. And this was an amazing thing that happened here. And, oh, wow, this was really big. Those are great. It's great to go back and think about those, but I can't live on those. What about today? What's happening right now? What's going to be happening tomorrow? Where's my faith with God at right this minute? And so I can't be content with the past things that I've done. Uh, the past victories and accomplishments that I've had. I I need to be living today. What are my accomplishments? What are are the things that are really happening right now uh, in my life as I'm moving on? I need to live for Jesus every single day. And uh, I can't imagine the disciples as they were following Jesus, if if Jesus would have did one miracle, just one miracle, pick your one, but that's all he did. And he says, oh, if the disciple said, oh, wow, one and done. That's awesome. Thank you so much. That is, uh, that's all I need. I don't need anything else. Uh, boy, think of all the things that they would have missed. And as we're moving through life, I believe that we need to connect with God in a greater and a greater way, that we need to connect with him, and we need to live for Jesus every day. And there's some new victories that we're having. There's some new uh, things that are going on. There's some new ways that we're conquering sin. There's some new things that we've done, and and we need to be having those every single day. Well, I I used to swim a lot. I grew up at a lake, and uh, we were in the water, under the water, more than we were on top of it. And uh, used to swim a lot. High school, a little bit into college, uh, there were some times that I actually did some swimming things. I, I'm not going to say a race. It was more like, can you do it and, and do it kind of things. Uh, but I, I sw- I've swam a mile uh, in, in w- at, one, you know, at one time, uh, swam a mile two or three times in my life. And uh, because I did that in the past, uh, I, I don't want you to think that you could drop me in some water right now and I'd do it again right now. Uh, to be honest with you, it's been a while since I've actually swam, to, to really swim. And uh, I'm, I'm kind of wondering right now if I'd sink like a rock. And so um, I you can't live on those past glories. We need to be working on our salvation now. We need to be doing some things now daily with our, in our relationship with Christ. 
And, and what I'm asking you to do, to do today is how about putting together a plan that you're going to follow and you're going to say, hey, I'm going to do this, this, and this, or I'm going to do this, whatever it is. We'll talk at the end about that. All right, the next thing that I find in these verses is something about obedience. It says obeying God with deep reverence and fear. Obeying God with deep reverence and fear. I, I believe the way that as believers we obey God is that we are being led by the Spirit of God. And that is letting us know that we're going to walk in the footsteps of Jesus and we're going to choose to say no to sin. We're going to choose to turn our backs on sin and follow Jesus wherever he would take us. And we're going to be walking in step with the Spirit. Uh, to be led by the Spirit is to do the things that the Spirit wants us to do and not fulfill the desires of the flesh. And so this idea of obeying God with deep reverence and fear uh, is following Jesus Christ and doing the things that he would do if he were in our place. And we're learning about that as we're reading God's word and as we're putting it into practice in our life. Uh, now, what if there were a group of people and there was a situation where I'm in the situation, there's a group of people and they're kind of all kind of down on, on God or they're down on something that God wants to have done. Uh, do I fear the group of people more or do I fear God more? I, I can kind of tell that if I wouldn't say anything here, then I'm kind of, with that group of people, I'm kind of actually fearing them more than I do God. But if I fear God more, it doesn't really matter to me what they're saying or what they're doing. I'm going to fear God more, and I'm going to go ahead and say what I believe that he is asking me to say at that moment of time. And I, I think that if you're, if you're going to fear, because I, I believe we're, we're going to fear something, if we're going to fear, why not fear God who loves us, who's preparing a place for us? I think that's the best of fear right there. And that is a reverent fear. That is a understanding who he is and who I am, and it's, it's putting me in my place. But if I'm a follower of Jesus, and all of a sudden this group over here, and I don't stand up for him, okay, who did I fear more at that moment of time? I feared more the group of people. I want to walk in step with Jesus Christ in everything that I do. So, verse 13. Uh, For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. I love this verse. God is working in you. You can work out your salvation. You can obey God with reverence and fear. You, you can do that. We, we can make it. And the reason is, is for God is working in you. He hasn't left us alone. He is working in us. And so he's working in us. And what is he doing? He's giving us two things, the desire and the power. He's giving us the desire to do what pleases him. His, he's given us the power to do what pleases him. I think it's important because I think, I don't know, I think a lot of times we think, wow, living this Christian life, okay, I'm going to live this Christian life, and it's, it's kind of like, okay, so God does his part, and then I do my part. And, and I know that's what it feels like. And even, even today, asking you to create a plan. The plan would seem like, okay, well, that's my part. Uh, the plan for me is more like I am creating space for God to work in my life. I'm using a couple things that I want to use, and I'm doing that so God can work in my life. But for as much as I think of, you know what? It's not God doing his part and then I have to do my part. Rather, it's we act. I can do what I can do because God is acting in me. He's doing these things. He's given me this desire. He's given me this power to do what pleases him. And so he's placing that in me. Uh, I create space for God. As I'm reading God's word, I can see some things that he gives me. Like even today, work out my salvation. Wow, have I been working out my salvation? Have I been showing others that I'm, I'm saved? Have I been living that way? Have I been obeying God? 
And so it can get me thinking in those ways, but then it's really God that energizes me and, and gives me the power and the desire to be able to do this. Even the desire to do what is good comes from God. That desire to do that. And I know some of us, uh, we've actually even had, maybe had conversations where you talked about, well, I really wanted to do what, what's, what's good, but I, I don't know, I, I fell off to the side. I took a detour. There's all kinds of different ways we might say it. Um, I stopped climbing the mountain. I, I turned my back on God and I walked away for a while. There's all kinds of ways that we would say that. But even the desire to do good, it comes from God. And we know that he's given us the desire. We know that he's given us the power to do it. And so if we don't do it, then it def definitely means we're out of step with God. We've turned our back on him. We're not following and doing what he wants us to do. God works in the believers. And I found this this last week, so let me read this quote. God also works in the believer to generate actual choices that are good so that the desires result in actions. So here's what this author is saying. He's saying, you know what? God also works in believers to generate actual choices, the choices that you and I make, that we make some good choices that are good, that are lined up with his word and his will, and so that our desires that we have inside of us, they actually become actions. And we can see them outside of our life. Other people can see them outside of our life. Uh, there's a verse in the book of James that says, Faith without works is dead. If there isn't any action, if our faith doesn't have any action, if it's just internal, it never moves outside, then we'd have to say, wow, is there real faith there or not? And we need to be able to, and willing to do whatever God wants us to do, and he's planted this desire in us. He's given us the power to do it. We need to do that. And so I, I would say it this way. It's God's love for us. It's his enabling grace uh, that he's going to see us through. He is going to help us do what desires him. It's God working in me. And God is the one doing the works and he's working through us he's the one doing it doing he's given us the power to do it god even creates the desire and power in us to do those things and so that's why i really like this little passage these these couple of little verses that we're talking about today because i think it's so important if we're going to live out our faith with god if we're going to follow him if we're going to do what he wants us to do uh, we got to understand he has given us the desire and the power to do it. I think a lot of us, we, we sense the desire. We, we think it's just us, but we, we sense the desire. Uh, but we always lack the power to do it. And so uh, maybe even just having this time right here, right now today, uh, you, you, you're going to be able to leave from here and have a few moments of, of quiet time, and you're going to be able to say this. You're going to be able to say, wow, God's planted some desires in me, but he's also given me the power to have the ability to do the things he's asked me to do. If I feel that God has asked me to do this, I believe he's planted that desire there, but he's given me the power to do that. And now I can step out and do it as I allow him to uh, flow through me. So what's my plan? What's my plan? What, what's, what's your plan? What is your plan? Uh, growing spiritually mature, it's, it's not just going to happen, okay? And so if, if that's the case, how are you planning on creating some space for God? All of us, we've got different places. Someone who uh, maybe they're retired and there's just not a lot of things. that They're saying, well, I've got lots of time that I can read God's Word. I've got lots of time that I can do some things. Others of us, we might be saying this, we might be saying, okay, so I've got two or three kids at home and we've got games here, school events here, this going on, this going on here, and I've got very little time. You know, God will meet you right where you're at in whatever you can, space you can have. So if you can clear an entire house, you got much space, awesome. If you can clear part of a room, awesome. If you just have a little bit of 
inside of you where you can clear a little bit of space so God can work. What's your plan? What's your plan? And uh, what's my plan to, I, I, if I use this passage here, I'd say this. What's my plan to work hard to show the results of my salvation? What, what's my plan to do that? Uh, what's my plan to obey God more and more every day with deep reverence and fear? What's, what's, what am I, what am I going to do to do that? And then this passage, I'd say, what's my plan to show that God's working in me? He's given me the desire and the power to do what pleases him. And uh, what's my plan to show that? Well, I thought today I would share my plan with you. Now, you do not have to copy this. And guess what? This is not rocket science. Some of you are going to sit back and you're going to go, oh, that's all you're doing? (laughs) Yeah, this is what I'm doing. And so I want to share my plan with you. And so I've got some letters that I'm using, uh, sets of letters. So RPM, R&D, and E, okay? So RPM, revolutions per minute, R&D, uh, research and development, and E. So it's those letters. So RPM, reading, prayer, memorize, all right? Three things. Now I know some of you are going, yeah, but that's typical stuff. Yeah, I know. So reading, my plan is to read the Old Testament this year. My plan is to spend five days a week in the Old Testament and digging out the truths there. And I want to do this for me. Some things may flow off and I might get to share it with you, but I really want to do this for me. It's a time when I want to read God's word and I say, God, this isn't for me preaching on Sunday. This is between you and me and I want to have this time. So I want to do some reading. Uh, Prayer. I have some prayer verses that I have down. I have a prayer that I like to read every single day and and pray every single day. And so I have some prayers, some prayers that I want to pray for us as a church, okay? Some prayers that I want to pray for my family and some prayers that I want to pray for myself. And so I've got these prayers. I would like to do a better job at praying. Just, Just to let you know, God's not tapping me on the shoulder saying, hey, wow, too much praying going on. We can't handle all these requests in heaven coming from you. God's not doing that with me. He's probably not doing that with you. And so I'd like to see my prayer life go from where it is and step up a little bit during this year. And then memorizing God's word. I've been on this little track for a while. I have an app. It's called Scripture Typer. And uh, I have some 300 verses on there. I'm in the process of re-reviewing those verses now. And then what I want to do for the rest of this year is I would love to see if I can add on another 100 verses, 150 verses. We'll see where I get to. But I'd like to be adding some new verses on that I am uh, learning. Uh, Can I quote them off from memory? Uh, Kind of if I have a little bit of help, but it's getting God's word in me. And that's the important thing to me. And so RPM, reading, prayer, and memorizing. So those three things. R&D, for me it stands for read and do. And what I've done is I've picked out two books for this year. And I'll probably end up reading some, a lot of other things, but I've picked out two books that I just want to sit in. Uh, sometimes I find out, my, you read this book, and then you kind of go away, and you always say this. You always say, well, I'd like to read that again. I don't know. I think maybe once I might have returned and repeated and read an, a book. But otherwise, it's kind of like you just read it, and then you just go on because you've already read it. Well, I've got two books. I'm going to share what they are. Uh, the first one is At Your Best. And the subtitle is How to Get Time, Energy, and Priorities Working in Your Favor. And so it's not really a time management kind of thing for me personally, but it is an energy management thing. And I'm finding out I need to manage my energy a little bit more. This is by Carrie Newhoff. And I've already been reading this book and kind of digesting it, but I've got this book has online all kinds of tests I can take, all kinds of extra things I can do. And I'm thinking this is one book I just want to go through this in the year and I may go through it several times I may go back and do chapters but I just want to sit with this book and say I want to see what I can glean uh, for myself personally the second book I want to do the same thing with is this journey of the soul Uh, subtitle a practical guide to emotional and spiritual growth this is by Bill and Christy Gaultier these are a couple people that I've bumped into several years ago as far as online I read one of Bill's books during our sabbatical when Julie and I were gone, 
And uh, so I did that. So this book, I want to, what, how can I grow emotionally? How can I grow spiritually? What are some spiritual formation things that I can do and I can become involved in that are going to help me at the different stages that I find in my life and what stage am I at? And so those are the two books. So RPM, Reading, Prayer, Memorizing, R&D, Read and Do, um, At Your Best, two books, and Journey of the Soul. And so those are two things. Now, the E, the letter E, probably isn't going to seem that spiritual, but I think it's probably really spiritual. Um, I'm using it as the word exercise. And so physical exercise. I'm looking at it saying, okay, I need to get some more exercise. We're at a time of year where it's easy not to do that. And so um, we have set up a few things, Julie and I have at the house, where we can do some exercising at the house, some physical exercise. I need to take care of the body, this temple of God. Uh, I need to take care of that. And so uh, we've got some exercise happening. I'm hoping when we hit summer, when we find it easier to do some exercise, either maybe hiking or bicycling or kayaking, uh, I hope we're already kind of ready just to get, get in and go because we've done something through the winter. Um, I know there's a couple of football games today, and so it'll be really easy to sit on a couch and kind of just take in some snacks and stuff and, you know, uh, hours later, um, no exercise or anything like that. And it might be okay for the day, but boy, we can't do that every single day. We got to keep on doing some exercise. So I, I'm, I'm working on, I think there might be a couple other letters that I add on, but I wasn't ready to do it. This I know that I'm ready to do. And as I'm doing my RPM, reading and spending time in prayer and memorizing, and by the way, prayer is twofold. It's me getting a chance to talk to God, but it's me also spending some quiet time listening to God. Uh, for me to be able to read these two books and when I'm doing some exercising and things, I want all of these to help me focus on my vertical relationship with God, my horizontal relationship with others, and what's going on internally in my life. And so that's my plan. Yours could look totally different. Actually, yours could look better. So can you, can you jot that down? You know what? I would love, if some of you would like to, I, I, I've had two people that have shared with me about their plan. If, if you have a plan and you've got it written down, if you can email it to me, that'd be awesome. I'd just love to see. If you write it, put it in the mail, send it, whatever you like to do. If we bump into each other for whatever reason, uh, we can have a conversation. You could tell me about your plan. But I, I'd love to hear what it is that you're doing for your plan and what you think you want to try to do this year in your relationship with God to bring you to another place. And so I just want to share one more time these verses in the book of Philippians. The second part of verse 12. Work hard to show the results of your salvation, obeying God with deep reverence and fear. For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. How are you going to create space this year for God to work in your life. Think about that. Think about that. And then don't don't just think about it. Actually begin to do it. Implement your plan. Uh, I've got another day or so, and then February 1st hits, and then I want to hit the ground running, starting to unfold my plan. All right, let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for today. Lord, thank you for your love for us. Thank you for your presence with us. And Lord, uh, we've been challenged again to get some kind of a plan together. Lord, this plan isn't like brownie points that we get to check off or anything like that. Lord, it's creating space for you to work in our life. And Lord, how do you want to do that this year? Lord, in our relationship with you, how do you want to do that this year where I I love you more completely than I do right now? Lord, horizontally with the people we bump into, Lord, how can we be as concerned about the things they're concerned about as we are for ourselves the things we're concerned about how can we get that concern to reach over to them and then lord finally internally what's happening inside of me as i come to this year and as i go through the rest of this year lord what is there that i can do lord i think if we make a plan i think it's going to be challenging i think sometimes it's going to be hard i think sometimes we're going to have victories and sometimes we're going to lose but lord we've got a plan we've got a kayak we're in the water and we're paddling And so, Lord, that's awesome, and that's what we need to do. So, Lord, thank you for your word today. Help us to work 
work out our salvation. We've got this incredible gift you've given to us. Help us to live it out. Lord, help us to obey you. And then, Lord, thank you. Thank you so much for giving us the desire and the power, the ability to do what pleases you. You haven't left us on our own. You are there with us every step of the way. Thank you so much for that. Lord, as we close, as we sing this final song, and as we uh, have a chance to take just a moment to pray for the in-person service that's going to be happening, Lord, I would pray that we would do that. We would pray for that service because now we know what they're going to hear. And, Lord, we can ask that their hearts are going to be open and that they would take this challenge on. And so, Lord, thank you so much. Uh, As we finish, just thank you so much for your word, and I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless everybody. We'll see you next time. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saves.